Next in the dish, I'm working. I'm working my way through the new season of Unsolved Mysteries, the reboot on Netflix, not the old one on NBC. The third season has nine episodes, and one of them follows a 20-year-old college student from J St. John's University in Minnesota. I'm seeing a lot of nodding heads in the office, in the audience. This is a, a mystery that hits close to home here in Minnesota. Here's a little clip. I think the most frustrating theory was that Josh just disappeared on his own free will, that he chose to disappear and kind of take a pause from life um, because his friends and I knew that wasn't what happened. We knew that he didn't just disappear and take a sabbatical from life. That's not who he was. That's not something he would have ever done. Josh was not suicidal. He was always talking about the future and what he was going to do next and what his career was going to be and where he was going to go. He planned on going to law school once we finished college, and then from there he was going to be a lawyer, and then from there he would be a politician, and eventually he would be the president. He had goals, aspirations. He was driven. He had a plan for his life. People that have plans for their life generally don't consider suicide as an option. Josh wouldn't leave everything behind to go start something else. He knew what he wanted and what it was going to take to get there. So it's a story of Josh Guillaume in uh, 2002. He went, to, he went to St. John's, and one night he went to a poker game at an apartment complex uh, just right at the edge of campus. It's a small, smaller campus, rural campus in Minnesota here, if you're watching us from around the country. Mm -hmm. And he went there around 11 o'clock, played poker. Everyone said that he was in a really good mood, and then he just left. He left without saying goodbye. Uh, he left around 11.30 midnight and was never seen again. And everyone that knew him said him leaving without saying goodbye was by itself odd. And he hasn't been seen since. Um, I'm not going to, I want you to watch it yourself, but it, 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 some of the little things that they uncover. And again, the show is called Unsolved Mysteries, so it still sadly has not been solved. He was part of a, people at one time, and I remember being here in this building at Fox 9, I was... We were all in the news business. We covered it. Actually, there's a lot of Fox 9 footage and reports in this episode of Unsolved Mysteries. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they did, this is the one reveal I will tell you. The one, the one aspect they lean into, they got a hold of his computer. And on his computer were records of him on Yahoo Personals chatting uh, with individuals. And he was posing as a woman speaking to men. Mm -hmm. And they are one theory... One theory is that he left that party because he maybe had a rendezvous with somebody, didn't want anybody to know, he vanishes. Right. There's a podcast, I, what's it called, Jeff? Simply Vanished. Simply Vanished, that Jeff has listened to that says it goes deeper than this episode and explores avenues like that. They talk about a spot on campus where a lot of people went for hookups mm -hmm. that, were, that was um, uh, known. And in this time of 2002, there was a car that used to drive around that you know, was flagged by campus security. That car was present a couple days before Josh disappeared and was present the, day that he dis the night that he disappeared. And they go into that as well. It's a really good episode. I've watched two episodes of the season. The other one about a UFO incident near my hometown. The UFOs are back? No, uh, four. Make it four. Um, anyway, maybe we'll talk about that one a, a little bit later, but go watch it right now, Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix.